Let's ask New York Post columnist Miranda Devine and Sentinel One Chief Security Advisor Morgan Wright. Good to see you both. Uh, Miranda, thank God for the New York Post and the work that you've done in uncovering all this. Uh, but the attempts to kill stories like the one that, that you folks broke uh, and, and to have journalists come out and talk about killing the First Amendment, get, giving the government extra tools for censorship, it, it makes you wonder whether the First Amendment is going to survive, doesn't it? Well, it's really very peculiar and sinister that you have journalists who are, you know, have immense uh, influence and access thanks to the First Amendment rights, thanks to the fact that they're supposedly the fourth estate, who are now calling... Uh, you know, really in, in desperate tones for more censorship. And uh, it's been a very clever propaganda move by the left, very successful, to, I guess, convince people and convince journalists that there's such dangerous misinformation or disinformation out there that uh, stupid people, voters, have to be protected from because uh, the journalists are so much smarter than them. And, you know, the, the really frightening part of this is that the censorship on Twitter uh, Twitter and on Facebook and in Google as well with big tech. It's not just uh, organic, it has been organised and orchestrated by uh, the FBI, by other security services and by the government. And that is this collusion that's gone yes. on that we're hoping Elon Musk will expose when he brings out the censorship deliberations of the New York Post story back in 2020. Well, it's, it's a collusion that worries some people inside the Beltway, thankfully. There is pushback. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, who's probably going to be the next Speaker of the House, he's certainly the leader of the GOP in the House right now. Uh, he came out. He was asked about uh, what kind, about what the White House has been talking about, about these new tools of censorship. Here's the way he responded to that question. Roll tape. That is offensive to me. Government's going to go after someone who wants to have free speech. What do they have to look at Twitter about? Do they want to go more after American public about whether they can have an opinion on something? Morgan, do you think there's any possibility? We remember when they, they came up with this committee, this misinformation committee uh, run yeah. by, by a woman who was spreading misinformation of her own on the Internet. I mean, there's, there's been so such bad pushback uh, by the public against attempts by the administration to, to do more censorship. Uh, do you think it'll go anywhere? No, I don't, David, and here's why. Uh, you know, regardless, forget Elon Musk for a second. Look at the way Twitter's been used. Twitter is in, is very important in terms of emergency communications. We've looked at wildfires. We've looked at earthquakes. We've looked at the ability for people to communicate, for public safety agencies to get that information out. Now, because somebody doesn't like Elon Musk, you're going to take away a valuable form of communication for somebody. They're getting this wrong because what they're trying to do is target the platform instead of targeting the bad actors. Russia, number one actor in terms of active measures and disinformation. You can take Twitter away all day you want. You know what they'll do? They'll get better at Facebook. They'll get better at uh, Snapchat. They'll get better at uh, Messenger. It, you, they're, they're focusing on the wrong thing. What we ought to be doing is focusing on the perpetrators of this as opposed to the people who are providing the platform. That doesn't mean platforms don't have a responsibility, but this is backwards. And I think what happens when you take a platform away from I can't I don't know how many active monthly active million active users they have. I think it's around 250 million. There will be reverberations, not only in the halls of Congress, but in the economy. Well, what about uh, the, the reverberations that could happen in the journalistic community, Miranda, when when Elon comes out with this information? He's he seems to be dead set on doing this, coming out with all the background on how the censorship took place, even though the, the story turned out to be 100 percent accurate. Now, two years later, even CBS is admitting that. But but I think a lot of journalists are going to be embarrassed by this stuff, don't you? I don't think so because they'll just double down. I mean, the truth is what they say it is and they'll just uh, continue to cover for Joe Biden and pretend that, that this is just some isolated instance. Um, when you look at the censorship on Twitter, on Facebook, um, and particularly on Twitter now as we're seeing more and more about how it worked, the inner workings of the censorship regime, it's all censoring conservative voices. There was no one from the left who was thrown off the platform compared to, you know, 
probably 92 per cent uh, were Conservatives, were right-wing voices, for no reason at all other than they were exposing information that mm -hmm. was embarrassing to the left, that was detrimental to Democratic, uh, you know, voting ambitions and detrimental to Joe Biden in our case, in the, the New York Post case. I mean, this was a very damaging story about one of the candidates for president that came out three weeks before the election and should have been aired so that the American people could have done uh, the proper due diligence on the candidates and they were never allowed to. That's really uh, a, a travesty. It is a, trage a tra tragedy and, and, and a travesty <laughs> as well. Uh, but Morgan, I'm wondering what Elon Musk is up against besides the he's, he's willing to take on the, the, the legacy media, if you will, right. which I, I have to I hate to agree with uh, with you on this, Miranda, but I, I think you are right. I don't think they're going to change their stripes. Uh, the stripes are embedded, but but the whole environment is beginning to change. And that's going to that's going to change things. The question is, Morgan, where does he get the people to replace those who had turned Twitter into a censorship machine, who've, who've used these algorithms to, to shadow ban people, et cetera. I mean, are there enough folks out there that he's going to be able to hire who can really change the dynamics of how it works? I don't think it's the number of people he can hire. I think it's the people. His plan is to get a billion users on the platform. Numbers speak in volume. So if he gets a billion users on there, the market has spoken. If we're really, if it's really about capitalism and free market, he's using that. People don't like the fact that he's doing polls. Well, when's the last time Mark Zuckerberg or even Jack Dorsey or anybody else came out and said, what is it you want as opposed to, here's what we're doing. You can like it or you can just leave or go somewhere else. They have no choice. People are being given a choice. I think Elon Musk, his biggest uh, battle is going to be against entrenched political interest against people who have a certain view of the way things ought to be done, right. as opposed to, hey, look, let the let the marketplace of ideas win out. If somebody doesn't like what you say, uh, my friend Chris Plant uh, has the perfect saying. He says the media has the most insidious power, the power to ignore. When you have a big enough platform, you can no, you no longer have the power to ignore people. They get their ideas out. And look, um, uh, there's nothing more dangerous than an idea whose time has come. Yeah. What, one final point, though, Miranda, we do have the the introduction now of Apple into the scene. And Elon Musk is claiming that Apple's thinking of taking the app off of their app store, uh, which would do a lot of a lot of harm in terms of it's it's spreading its wings. Now, uh, Governor DeSantis has weighed in on this on on whether or not Apple can do that. I want to roll that tape and get your reaction. Go ahead. That Apple is threatening to remove Twitter from the app store because Elon Musk is actually opening it up for free speech and is restoring a lot of accounts that were uh, unfairly and illegitimately suspended for putting out accurate information about COVID. Quickly, Miranda, where do you think this battle between Elon and, and Apple is going? Look, this is an existential battle for our civilization, really. Uh, and uh, Elon Musk is threatening the very basis of the power of the left, and they will stop at nothing to destroy him and to stop him. I hope he remains resolute, and we should all be supporting his his, his stance, really. He has so far. Uh, let's hope he has the backbone for it. I agree. The whole of the, the, the establishment is going after him now. Uh, Morgan, Miranda, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. You bet, it. David.